Hello there, adventurers, and welcome to Wall ADM. Today we have part three in our final installment of the Player's Survival Guide to Traps. And joining me once again is Fred from How to D&D. Thanks for joining me again, Fred. Oh, I'm looking forward to talking about disarming traps. Thank you for having me on. Absolutely, no problem at all. Now, if you are just joining us for the first time and haven't seen the first two, I would highly suggest that you go and see them. I'll put links in the description below, but we have already covered how to find traps and how to evaluate them. So today's topic is how what are we going to do with these traps? We found them. We know what they do. Are we going to attempt to disarm them? Are we going to avoid them? And that is where Fred is going to take us on. And we've got all kinds of great ideas for you, the player, to make your dungeon master just frustrated that his traps aren't working. Okay, so you found the trap. You know how this trap works, and it's time to deal with it. So there are probably about six different ways you can deal with a trap, and there are mm -hmm. some provisions to deal with it. So the first one is you can try to disarm the trap, you can try to avoid the trap, you can trigger the trap, you could jam the tra trap up, you mm -hmm. can use a spell to deactivate the trap if it's magical, and you can just destroy the trap in some way. There are ways of destroying traps as well. Now you will have noticed by all the options I've presented, not all traps can be disarmed, so you have to approach them differently mm. based on the trap you're dealing with. So if it can't be disarmed, you're going to be looking at some of the other options. So when it comes to actually disarming a trap, I would expect your dungeon master is going to use a dexterity check or a sleight of hand check to actually disable a trap if you're trying to do that. Now, the first thing you want to understand is dungeon masters are going to hit a very high DC. The difficulty class to disable a trap, dungeon masters are going to probably make that very difficult. If you're dealing with Wizards of the Coast, again, pre-made adventures by Wizards of the Coast usually have disabling a trap in the medium range. Usually you'll see a 15, uh, whereas mm -hmm. your dungeon master, if they're home brewing, are probably going to set it much higher than that. I know I do. So be wary of that. That means <laughs> you need to be ready for the thing to go off if the disabling process doesn't work. So you might need to ensure that you are proficient in thieves tools because when it comes to disabling a trap or picking a lock, something like that, usually the Dungeons and Dragons 5e rules require you to be trained or proficient in thieves tools. So if you're not trained in thieves tools, don't go mucking around with it. Don't get your dagger and try to jam it in there some way and try to deactivate the trap with a great huge hoary dagger. If you don't have thieves tools and you're not proficient, leave it alone. <laughs> that is the best advice ever right there. <laughs> and if your character is not the one that is going to try to deactivate that trap, you go way back, especially if you're the elven cleric, way back in the back. Now, when it comes to something like a magical trap, mm -hmm. there are ways of dealing with that that are pretty simple. You can try something like Dispel Magic that might dispel the effect. Mm -hmm. You could also use something like Counter Spell because it's a reaction. So in other words, you expect the trigger to actually activate, the trap go off, but you're going to use Counter Spell to stop the, tra the trap doing anything nasty to you. The problem with Counter Spell is some Dungeon Masters will specify that you need to know what's going on. If you can't see or understand what's going on, you can't react fast enough. And other dungeon masters will like, no, that's fine. You can use counter spell. That makes perfect sense. There's another spell you could also consider, particularly if you're dealing with a trap that has an attack roll of any kind. And that is something like shield because it gives mm -hmm. you a plus five to your armor class and it'll help protect you from that magical trap that fires out poison darts or makes any kind of attack whatsoever. Um, so those are some suggestions I would have. I had never thought about using Counterspell before. That's that's very good. I've always considered it as far as an NPC casting a spell, but in order to react to a trap going off that's a magical spell, that I mean, it makes total perfect sense now, but as a player, I never would have thought of that. That's really cool. So there is a subclass of the rogue, the arcane trickster. And one mm -hmm. of the great things about the arcane trickster is one of its abilities that they can use with mage hand in conjunction with thieves tools. So make sure, of course, again, you are proficient with thieves tools and you cast your mage hand, you use your mage hand at a range of 30 feet 
to try to disable that trap without getting too close because it's better to be 30 feet away using mage hand and thieves tools mm -hmm. uh, rather than five foot away which is probably going to be happening if you're not using mage hand now unless you are a arcane trickster you can't do that sort of thing with mage hand normally it's specific to that subclass right. now for those traps that have a trigger that you can't reach because it's too far away sometimes the best way to deal with a trap is not to disable it or disarm it is to jam it so in other words if you have a trap that has a hole with your darts they're going to shoot out stick stones or rocks in the in the holes or jam it up with wax or cloth um, sometimes you can jam a pressure plate on a trap if you can't actually disable it or disarm it because you can't get at the mechanism and how would you do that use those iron spikes uh, or your piton provided you can get into the gap again there are problems of doing that it might set off the trap but it's another option if you can't actually physically disable it and the dungeon master says you can't get at the mechanism to do that so try jamming it up if something like jamming the trap or disarming the trap or disabling the trap is way too risky or can't be done then maybe you need to consider avoiding the trap completely so you go mm -hmm. around the trap if you can you go under the trap sometimes over the trap or in the worst case scenario you have no other choice and you have to teleport past the trap that might be the only solution that means that location might be um, a place you can't go until you have access to a teleport ability. Yes, and, th and that's a few things that I had on my list as well. Misty Step is a second level spell, so being able to move 30 feet with the snap of a finger or a bonus action and get past the trap is always good. And I also thought maybe Spider Climb might be good because a lot of your traps, especially your pressure plates, are going to be in the ground and a lot of your traps are going to be on the side of the walls. But if you're able to Spider Climb across the top of a ceiling, if you're going down a 30, 40 foot corridor, then you can avoid the traps of Spider Climb. So in the extreme situation where you really don't have too many options, it might be better to trigger the trap. So how do you go about doing that? Well, first off, make sure you're a very long way away from it and you need to have a way of doing so. Now, I would only suggest triggering a trap if it blocks your way in terms of proceeding through the adventure. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's probably better to just leave it alone or there's nothing else that's going to work. So you've tried a lot of the other things and they're not working. And so you've got no other choice but to trigger the trap. One of the problems with triggering a trap though is dungeon masters like to have traps reset not all traps reset but sometimes they do mm -hmm. so just because you trigger the trap check it before you proceed if you've triggered the trap and it's gone off you want to make sure you check it before you proceed because it may have reset straight away so let's go back to magical spells or magical traps and how they work and how you might want to deal with them one of the things you might be thinking is, okay, I've cast Dispel Magic on this magical trap. It's now no longer working. But one of the things that Dungeon Masters like to do, as I've talked about resetting spells mm -hmm. um, and resetting traps, right. is they might be set up in such a way that you can dispel it, but they reactivate after a certain time. You don't know what that time frame is, and there's no way of figuring out what that is. So once you actually use Dispel Magic, and it's no longer active don't muck around get past it as fast as you can don't wait and think <laughs> that you don't have to worry about it anymore and when you come back that way and that magical trap is there and you thought you had dispelled it and it's active again make sure you check that location with detect magic mm -hmm. before you pass through there just in case you have a dungeon master who likes to reset magical traps <laughs> as good dungeon masters do <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay, so just a couple things that I'd like to add, and especially on the distance, is let's say you have a treasure chest that is locked and you want to open it from a distance, like Fred said. I believe the spell Knock, which has a 60 foot range, would be a fantastic option. And then once you do that, uh, what would happen after we open our that treasure chest with Knock, Fred? What would, um, does, does it just pop the lid open? Do you know? Or I don't believe the spell actually opens the thing okay. um, i think the idea behind it is that it's going to unlock whatever is locked there um so uh so with regard to knock knock can only 
disable one lock at a time. So if there's more than one lock on something, um, you would have to cast it multiple times. You won't necessarily know mm. how many locks are involved, but usually most things have one lock. So you would still have to use, say, a 10-foot pole once you've used knock okay. to unlock the box, um, or, say, mage hand from a distance, provided it's not too heavy, the lid, or some other method that you might uh, have available to you. You could even summon a creature to do the lifting for you and sacrifice them. Yes, that was one of my next points that I wanted to make too, is especially with druids or anyone that can summon animals or things like that. And not just opening the treasure chest lid, but if you need them to go down a hallway, you summon a... I, I'm sorry, poor black bear, but you you summon this black bear to just kind of tread down the hallway 40 feet to kind of take the brunt of anything that comes before you. Um, again, sorry, poor black bear. <laughs> I mean, but that could possibly be a way to do that. And then I could also go another route and say that perhaps you're traveling with a necromancer and you have a zombie, maybe a body that died from the last trap that was there and he raised this body up and now you've got a meat shield that can walk down this corridor, can trigger all the pressure plates, all the poison darts. And by the time it gets to the other end, it's going to look like a voodoo doll zombie or something like that. So being able to <laughs> summon creatures to send your familiars in and things like that is uh, definitely great ways to do it at a distance and then i believe grant in my discord also mentioned the spell shatter now i don't know how a dm would rule that but shatter can destroy non-magical objects so perhaps there is a trash you a chest you want to obliterate or perhaps just a door that has a mechan a trap mechanism on it i believe shatter's got a 60 foot range that deals 3d8 of damage so if you cast that it can destroy objects that are in the path or where the trap is located so that's a really good point so when it comes to destroying traps there are a bunch of spells that don't just affect creatures you mm -hmm. can use them to affect an object and often traps are objects right so right. firebolt is a cantrip and it does fire damage and you can hurt a creature but you can also ignite or set alight an object with Firebolt. Um, you may be able to get away with using something like Fireball, but it's a cantrip Firebolt. So mm -hmm. just keep spitting that thing out until it's done its job. Um, right. And there are probably other spells you could use to do damage to the trap itself mm -hmm. so that it's no longer going to cause any trouble for you. Absolutely. Now, one thing I do want to warn to players, especially since this is a player's guide to surviving traps, is if your DM sees you expending spell slots to take care of traps, that might be the entire purpose that those traps are there. So once you've expended your second level spell slot to misty step past a trap or whatever spell slot to cast shatter or things of that nature, by the time you get through all the traps, then you have the big bad or a heavy combat encounter and now all of your spell slots are gone. So if you're going to use your spell slots to deal with traps, just be careful in how you do it. So one more thing that I want to think of, and if, again, this is if you're okay with casting spells in order to deal with traps and things of that nature, is Unseen Servant. And do you know how that works, Fred, Unseen Servant? Unseen Servant's actually pretty smart because okay. I'm pretty sure Unseen Servant, I hadn't thought about that. If I remember, Unseen Servant can interact with the environment. And as a result, it would be a pretty good way of activating a trap at a distance or you may be able to get it to actually destroy the trap for you um mm. uh, so yeah oh here we go unseen servants on page 284 um it's got a range of 60 feet when you cast it but i'm pretty sure the unseen servant does it have a, a distance that can move further away from you that's it's like really... 40 to 60 um, feet away 40 if you command the servant to perform a task that would move it more than 60 feet away from you the spell ends so you've mm -hmm. only got 60 feet to play with okay. so even if you give it you create it at 60 foot and 60 foot it can't move beyond 60 foot um without uh no longer existing so that's the only hassle with that one fantastic okay so that's all we have for you today again this is the entire player's guide to surviving traps this is a three-part series and i hope that you found a lot of information that you can use to improve your gameplay as a character in a DD game and not only that but i hope it frustrates your dungeon master and be sure to tell him that you 
learned it from Fred and Wally, and you've seen it on YouTube. So uh, with that being said, thank you very much, Fred. You have been awesome. I have learned a lot of stuff over this three-part video series. Thank you very much for coming on and talking about traps with us. You're welcome, and uh, I hope the next time we talk about something, it is just as interesting as this topic has been. Fantastic. Me too. So very much looking forward to it. I want to thank everyone for watching. I appreciate it. If you are not a subscriber of How to d d make sure you go over and check out Fred's channel. I'm going to put a link in the description below. He's got hundreds of videos for players and for Dungeon Masters, so all kinds of great content that you can find useful. So that's all we have for you today. Thank you very much for watching, and on to the next. Cool. Good. All right, so I have something useful to say. Um, <laughs> all, of it's use, all of it's useful. Yeah. <laughs>do you want me to use that clip or do you want to talk about it in in video form? no i don't uh, 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 you you can talk about it if you still got your voice <laughs> I'm otherwise good. <laughs> yeah yeah you go for it mate you got your idea okay um